Hey guys, uh, what would ninjas do? Sensei George and Sir Kirk Not Green doing a little bit of a joint program today. We're going to be checking out some uh, move sets from a video game called Sekiro. I'm pretty sure many of you ninja fanatics, as well as the people that enjoy watching Kirk's channel, have checked it out before. Here's a quick disclaimer I've never played Sekiro. I don't know the plot of Sekiro besides a guy dies and gets like a cool uh, reanimated arm that has a grappling hook in it and <laughs> it was going to be the next line of Tenchu but then it got redirected and then had a baby with a uh, god of war and then came out as it is of being Sekiro. That's my take on it anyways. Kirk knows a lot more about it. I know Japanese martial arts. And uh, we're just going to scrub through and review some of these moves, have some discussions, and hopefully you enjoy checking some stuff out. If you have questions about some of the things we discussed today, drop them in the comments below. And uh, you may see me going back and forth like this. It's because I don't have a switcher. Uh, I'm trying to you know, work with the software we got to be able to make it so that we can watch and you guys can see our reactions and scrub back and forth and actually have a little bit more intimate conversation with our faces <laughs> okay so uh, any kirk anything you need to say um i'm just saying that um as someone who does the recreations and wants to talk about the realism of the moves themselves i didn't feel i um, in good conscience that it would be um good to just rag on the moves when i'm not a specialist in this form of martial arts so bringing someone that is a specialist to then rag on it makes me feel less like i'm you know crapping on something that's may be good on their end but i don't see it so definitely why it's nice to have a second opinion when looking at these footage it's always good to broaden your horizon and uh make sure we're, we're open-minded about how we tackle this stuff but at the, end, at the end of the day they're video games and we appreciate them because they're fun okay so i'm gonna go ahead and swap screens and uh we can go ahead and start doing our scrubbing now get my tea uh, just so those of you that are interested, I absolutely love myself some Japanese green tea. That's what I got in this mug. Uh, you know, it's just fitting. <laughs> Gotta get you in the mood. It's going over Japanese martial arts, you need Japanese green tea. <laughs> uh, I think that means that when you review Dark Souls, you should be drinking English tea or English breakfast tea. Okay. So, you know, just get you in the mood. It has like rose and hibiscus and stuff in it. It's pretty well, good. I was just going to get like an Estes can and put like OJ. Yeah. <laughs> 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 huh. Okay, uh, so how, how do you want to do this? Uh, do you want to review one move at a time, just let it roll through a little bit, then rewind? Um, I would say just just re let yeah, let it roll a bit, and if you see anything that caught your eye in terms of like anything that you want to talk about, and then we'll just go through that. Okay, let, uh, let Mortal Kombat begin. And uh, what's this guy's name again? Uh, Sword Saint Ishin. Sword Saint Ishin. Or Kensei Ishin, if you're going to go by the Japanese term. Uh, Kensei would be a lot easier to refer to. Yeah. So right now he's, uh, you know, using a katana. Um, now, I, I know you said he, he does drawing sword cuts. Mm -hmm. And I see him, like, cocking his sword back. But I can't actually see him put it into his sheet. Um, some of them he does. Not, none of these ones he's doing it, but some of the later ones he does it. So like right right now we got some like that's a, that's a sheath. He pulls he pulls it out. But it looked like it was from the right side. No, he pulls it out and then holds it on the right side. Oh okay. That one is one where it's on his left side. So he had a lot of like high power strokes from the top, mm -hmm. like you know one stroke one stroke, uh, attacking to pretty much try to break a person's guard. Yes. With repetitive strikes. That's the that's the sheath. That was a good sword draw. Well, he, he actually didn't sword. He, like, drew the sword. He did a palm strike, and then... Uh, let's, let's go back to that one. Let's see. Should be around here. So this one is it, there. yeah. Okay, so it was a pommel strike to the chin, and then... Uh, there we go. I'm going to slow it down for the review. So he came in with the pommel strike with the chin and then does a uh, spin strike uh, to the dull area. Uh -huh. um, and hasn't changed his grip or anything. Comes in, would have been a belly cut. And I mean, I give it to them on this. Uh, for the sword draw cuts and stuff like that, I, w I want you to take note of where 
his sword ends mm-hmm. it's not past him into the opposite side mm-hmm. sometimes video games have people do their drawing shortcuts and it, it's way over exaggerated mm-hmm. and puts them in a compromised stance mm-hmm. he does this sword cut well the uh, pommel strike then the spin strike and then on the exit of the spin strike his right foot's forward and the sword is out just enough mm-hmm. so it can turn back in for a follow-up cut uh, or drop back into uh, with Sagon, or what you refer to as long point, mm-hmm. to make sure that it's harder for someone to enter. So I, I, I can say I specifically like um, their ending stances okay. of their cuts. Now, uh, from the pommel strike, if you had actually successfully landed that, dropping to the right and doing a doe yeah. or something of that nature would have been a little bit more what I would have gone for versus the spin, spin strike. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. again, spin strikes are cool. But they, they put you in a compromised position. Now, if you had someone behind you and in front of you, I could see that being a le- legitimate maneuver because you would go to strike the person with the pommel in front of you, cut the person behind you, and in that same motion, come back around to get the person that you initially struck, thereby making it so that you can attack two people in that situation. Mm-hmm. So uh, something situationally that, that that may have arisen from is that you had or were carrying a sword back then and two people would try to arrest you and when one addresses you from the front they're going to get ready to do their maneuvers getting close and you would try to do this to take care of both people okay so that that's a uh, hypothetical situation that they could have pulled that off from um let's see if i can get back to normal speed Now, he does that a lot. I, I actually like like how they do the like after cut so you can see the angles. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know you could just... I mean, let's say he, he cut with uh, his key eye uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. on that one. So I, I know this is something that you had brought, brought up to me as well. Uh-huh. Um, the concept of someone doing uh, sword strikes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then in the middle of the combo, putting their sword back in their sheath. And so like th- th- he's getting ready to do that. I'll slow it down for this. Uh huh. He does. It's not that. It's not this one. Oh, he yeah. resheaths. Well, let's just, okay. So he's coming over top. He did a two arm swing, uh-huh. multiple directions, resheath, and then and then cut again. Uh huh. Okay. Um. <laughs> if. So, th- this is a phrase that stuck with me for a very long time. If you're in a fair fight, your tactics suck. Okay? <laughs> Hands down. And I, I know that sounds weird. You know, oh, yeah, we should do sports, fair game. I'm not talking about sports. Fair fight. Not fair competition. Not fair sport. Fair fight. Uh, if you're in a fair fight, your tactics suck. You should try to have as many tactical advantages as you can. So... Seldom in a martial arts situation where your life may depend on it, would you put yourself in a disadvantageous position? Being, my sword is already out, here's a cut, here's another cut, you know what I think is a uh, swell opinion? Shoving my sword back in its sheath and then putting it behind me. Uh, That type of motion does two things. A, it takes your sword out the fight. Uh, I have a plethora of techniques that I've learned from uh, Gyokuru, which involve coming in and jamming the sword uh, from even coming out of the sheath. So if you put that there, you, A, gave me a weapon to use against you, B, you took your weapon to use against me away. Uh, C, is that by putting it behind you, you telegraph your body more of where the angle's coming from. I mean, you can only do the drawing shortcut from your right hand coming forward here or a surprise left hand switch of that situation. But guess what? The sword still has to travel from your left hip to where I am. And the further away you put it behind you, the more likely I can stop that rotation or jam or get to the outside of your arm that you would use to try to cut me. Um, The other instance, again, is that by doing this, you pull yourself away, you modify the distance. Uh, That's how come you see, um, this is you playing, right? Yes. So as he went to go do this, even Kirk was like, okay. He's clearly getting ready to do a drawing sword cut. Let me take a step back, you know? <laughs> so it even gave him time to gauge the distance and change it to get out of his effective range. Martial arts is all about range management because he who controls range management controls damage. Okay? Let's get back to it. 
and he does a lot of one arm sword swings uh, with a yeah. with a full blown yeah. like full size katana. Yes. Maybe even a little bit longer, so it might be like a o an o katana. Okay. Now I, I dig the effects. Uh huh. <laughs> like, what, what, what's this guy's backstory with that part? Oh, okay, pause this. Oh, I mean, he said, and he summoned a spear out of the and grass. And a gun. And a gun. And, and, and a gun. I think the gun, like, may have been on him or in a holster. Or... Yeah, no, he just pulls it out. Okay. <laughs> Nowhere. So, um, the general gist of his backstory, so he's, like, basically this OG superstar warrior. Oh, th that, that's the thing, though, too. Sword saints, okay? <laughs> they're, they're a little bit different than just, like, sword masters or samurai that were very good. Uh, they came... In a time before samurai getting extremely good with the swords in battle were a thing, they sort of uh, chased the pathway of the sword earlier mm. and became role models for those people in like the feudal era. So they're like, okay, like those guys were really good with swords. They're the legends we aspire to be mm. on the battlefield. So they, they they sort of were like the the forefathers of get good. With a sword in Japan. <laughs> right. But, um, so this guy's backstory, so for you to know. Basically, um, in the beginning of the game, he essentially um, wrested control of his nation from the overarching central Japanese government and sort of kind of had his own clan and was leading them. And essentially the central Japanese government is trying to retake that land in that area. Mm -hmm. And he's been fighting for most of his life to essentially keep that plot of land. But then he gets old, and then he pretty much has to retire, and he's sick. And then his grandson takes over, but his grandson's like, we need immort like immortality to like you know keep us alive from like getting stomped by the government. But it you is hear that, kids? <laughs> to beat the government, you need immortality. <laughs> so you can either get the Holy Grail, the Philosopher's Stone, <laughs> or this thing from Sekiro. But. Like, so basically, even though that was happening, the central government, like, was like, yeah, we don't care about your mortal soldiers. So he's like, dang it. So Ishin then dies of sickness, and then his grandson takes um, a mortal blade, and he slits his own throat in order to re-summon his grandfather in his prime, and then he's fighting you because, you know, you're, you're kind of the reason partially why the area is, like, you know, getting attacked by the government, because you killed all, like, the main generals. So, you know, it's huh. not like... Hey, I gotta stop you now, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> Quick question. Yes. Did his grandson even know him? Yes. Did, okay, okay. Did, I would have yeah. hated for him to be like, I heard that my grandpa was great with the sword and spear. Everyone loved him, but I never saw him in action. I'm gonna slit my own throat to summon a man I never met. No, so no. I'm, I'm glad it's not, uh, no. not on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he leveled up. He. This is the second part of the boss battle where yes. he summons. A spear and a gun is a like surprise sidearm. Mm -hmm. um, now I, I know that you also brought up that he he dual wields during this. Yes. Let's watch it a little bit and then, then, then we'll talk some. Du dual wielding spear and sword. Triple wield because he also used the gun too. Well, you know what I, I haven't gotten to take note of is how he positions his body. Does he sheath the sword before he uses the gun? Or um, depends. He either puts the spear um in between his armpits, or he um sheaths his sword to pull up the gun. Hmm. Okay, so he sheath the sword, pull the gun. Um, and w what I find interesting too is that uh oh that that one was different. He put the um he put the spear between his armpit and used yeah. the offhand to do it there. Now that. Is he just summoning the gun? Because like that, that would be like an interesting way to draw uh -huh. off cancer to then pull it out. Normally, you would have it so that your main hand to draw your gun would be able to pull it. But if you can dual wield, that's an interesting thing. I mean, the fight's very artistic. Yeah. Because, like, every time the spear hits, even when he's not in the grass, it's, like, leaving, like, the wheat heads. Yeah. Uh, so it adds an element to the, the spear strikes, I think. Uh, the flowing of his uh, yuagi top, or the, the kimono, looks really nice uh, while he's swinging around. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is going to sound uh, you know, a, a little funny, 
I, I really actually like the style of spearhead he, he, he uses, uh -huh. but it's completely underutilized in this fight. Uh, I'm trying to get... Uh, he, he does it more. Him. The thing is, I don't get hit as much, but he does um, attacks where... So the spearhead, right? He would stab into it, and then he would turn sides to yeah. like the curve blade, the longer curve blade to pull into you. I'm trying to get like one. there we go. So like you can see that it's like the spear piercing the moon sickle style. Mm -hmm. So you have the double sa the double sided blade on both sides, and then you have like this crescent shape. Now depending on who does it and how they sharpen it, the crescent shape can cut when it's pulling, but it can also slice while it's going through and stab in like interesting ways so you can swing it and still get a, like a stab in from the side and slicing if they step just out of that reach but then if you miss you can also pull which is a pretty cool aspect of that um, and if he, he like grab uh, one interesting thing about these like uh passerby weapons is i'm going to refer to it as like oh you missed me you thought so and then they pull it back and they get you is that Japanese wore the kimonos and mm -hmm. very like poofy clothes in a sense. They took up a lot of space. That's when they wore the wrist wraps and the leg wraps to tie the clothes down so that they wouldn't get in the way of fighting. However, because it's a baggy material, if something sharp were to capture on it, it could actually like drag and pull on the material a little bit more easily mm -hmm. than if it were like form fitting or uh, everything was a little bit tighter, like in modern day, like Under Armour and stuff like that, uh, where it doesn't like get out of the way. But hooked weapons were utilized. Like there were some weapons that were used for arresting people. There were literally spiked poles, and the spiked poles would be used to engage the clothes and then tug people down while other people got on top and started to arrest them. So it's, um, it has some attributes of that. I, I'm not sure if we'll see something of that nature. You said that... Uh, do you, like, go go back go back a bit, and um, I'll tell you which one it is, and I'll tell you to go oh. slowly through it. Um, a little bit further back. A little bit further back. The, it should be the one before... We're almost at the start. That that should have been one, where he, where he focuses on his thrust. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh See, right around here a little bit back yeah that's it that one's it that one's the clip you want me to slow it down slow it down go a bit back go a bit back and then have it slow yeah there start right here okay so he did a sweep then he went for a thrust and he okay i saw i saw it there uh, -huh. uh he did he did the pull back so mm -hmm. he thrusted and it looked like he thrust it into the ground mm -hmm. so he did the strike then he does the sweep, mm -hmm. and then out of that sweep, he does an overhand downward thrust mm -hmm. with that. And you can see him effectively like pull back with force. And that, that actually did get you with a returning hit on that yes. one. Um, now, something like that, it looked like it may have been a torso blow, but by all means, that would have been a super effective like leg blow. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the Japanese armor, they would have their shin guards on the front and sometimes something that can cover the knee. Uh, but you can't guard your joints. Your joints need to be able to articulate and then things were normally tied behind. The strikes were coming from the front. So behind the legs was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So if like I missed or I did a forceful thrust and it missed you and it hit the ground and you're like, ha ha, I'm going to come in and get you. All I have to do is hop away and pull back forcefully and let it slice the calf muscle. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it can be used for that. It could actually sever some of the ties and the armor could fall off and impede your movement. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it doesn't even have to be a lethal blow. It could do something else. And the cool part is, I know he's dual wielding <laughs> a full-blown katana and a full-blown spear. By all means, you get exhausted from this type of thing, but he has some immortal demon juice that yeah. has... <laughs> You know, performance enhancing uh, <laughs> demon juice, you know. Uh, but he went in for his thrust with one hand and then pulled back and he's using sword. Like, honestly, if I had the stamina and strength to be able to do that for a long period of time, it'd be pretty cool. Um, but if I came in with that thrust and I can pull that back, I could even give up the spear and land a pretty brutal cut. Because, like, if you go to pull that back with a step 
back and then re-grab your sword with two hands on one. Then you can do a follow-up cut after you've uh, taken out the opponent's leg and eliminated his mobility. So, like, there are some cool little, like, mm -hmm. options in here. And I'll say that while dual wielding wouldn't be an option for me in, in that sense, unless, like, I, you know, get performance-enhancing demon <laughs> juices, um, <laughs> the sword could still be worn while you utilize the spear. Uh, in the Ruha that I practice, Kukishinru, uh, the, the sword is a great weapon, but the spear is better. You have better range. It's it's just overall better. Like, <clears throat> if someone was like, okay, would you rather have a spear or a sword? I'd rather have the spear. Like, the sword's nice, but the spear is better. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just hands down. You have the range, you have different maneuverability, and you have uh, striking ends on both sides of the weapons with increased range. Uh, sword, not so as much. But you could still do a similar maneuver where you go to do the thrust, you go to pull back, abandon, and then draw your sword for your next cut. So it has some options there mm -hmm. uh, in case your blade gets damaged or stuck in your opponent's leg. You go to pull it back, shk, and then it's not coming. Mm -hmm. You could try to forcefully pull it out, or you could just go for your next weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could go for your opponent's weapon. The options are endless when you have a creative imagination. <laughs> right. Um, so that, that was a cool part about how you know the spear is being utilized for some of the benefits of the weapon itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's uh, go back. Like, I know he's doing some crazy stuff with the one hand swings, but yeah. like, if you were to double, oh, uh, that 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 is one other thing that I, I wanted to point out. Um, notice how he constantly rests the uh, spear over his shoulder. Uh huh. Um, for someone that is dual wielding, that he's using his power hand for the sword, mm -hmm. his off hand for the spear. Um, he does a lot of slams with it and mm -hmm. sweeping motions, putting it over the shoulder. And gripping it in the middle helps alleviate a lot of the weight to save your stamina. But for when he goes to do the swings, pivoting it off for the swings and mm -hmm. the slams is a uh, practical method to increase the strikes. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that stands out to me the most is he probably would do a lot better if he had an Odachi and the Katana. Because mm -hmm. he's using the spear very similar to how you would use an odachi except okay. for the slams uh-huh because the slams would damage the blade mm -hmm. but he's using shoulder propelled strikes and large swoops because um, normally the people that would carry the nodachi are like the death squad they go in there uh the, the terror squad as they name it they go in there after the, the battle's been going on and then they bring out these like barbaric weapons to just slice through already tired people mm -hmm. that make the other tired people more fearful of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it's just one one thing that stood out to me is that like I just felt that he could do some Nodachi moves. Because mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't use the other end of the spear either so far. Uh, well, he did just right there. Speak of the the strike, <laughs> he uh, came forward and did a light pommel strike uh, to the knee with that. Okay, now I I don't I don't know like what air he's walking on, <laughs> but that that was a pretty crazy strike there. <laughs> well then, <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I would love to redirect some lightning like Zuko over here. Okay, th this guy has, like, no defensive moves, but he has, like, immortality frames in some of his strikes, it looks like. Because, like, you, you ran up on him in the middle of the swing and it didn't look like it interrupted him. Mm hmm Yeah, no, he just he just gets immune to um, uh, getting staggered sometimes. Now, one of the benefits of maybe dual wielding during this situation mm -hmm. was that um, very often a counter for some spear stuff is that the other guy might try to like dodge and then grab this mm -hmm. the actual pole arm and prevent you from wielding it. Mm -hmm. If someone goes to grab your pole arm, they occupy their hands while their hands are occupied to use the other weapons to mm -hmm. help get in the way of that. 
Um, so that 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 is something that having a short sword ready, Tonto, mm-hmm. uh, these hands <laughs> come, comes into play if someone grabs your weapon. Mm-hmm. But um, he was really pivoting um, the weapon off of him. He said it was well done, but you didn't get the cut all the way through. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, one thing that was interesting was his, like, Beyblade moments. Um, like, he, he would come in for his strikes, mm-hmm. and then he would, like, circle the spear and, like, spin at the same time. Mm-hmm. So his, like, uh, kimono was spinning. He looked mm-hmm. like a ghost. <laughs> and he'd, like, fade out, fade in real quickly. Mm-hmm. I'm not not there. This the first one I noticed was like when he was by the bridge and he did like the little phase float back right here. Let's slow it down a little bit. He got he got some like bunnies. <laughs> so he does a, a slam and then like right right around here he'll do a slash come in. Ah, oh, do the thing. <laughs> Now that that that's a good like that that one was a good tactic, because he he straight up used a range movement to prevent you from coming in, mm-hmm. and then pulls out his firearm. Mm-hmm. So like that is not unfamiliar from like a ninja tactic of like using a sword slash to get you away, mm-hmm. so that I have time to draw my shuriken or kunai and continue throwing. Mm-hmm. And yes. Kunai are implements used for throwing. Mm-hmm. However, that's not their main use. <laughs> and unlike Naruto, they're not used to slash people all that much either. <laughs> they're used for digging and uh, getting inside places uh, during that period in which they were used. But they do have the capacity by sl- with slicing with the edge, but mostly stabbing. So like, if you were to get in close quarter combat, you can use the kunai for stabbing or for throwing. And if I hit you with the blunting of kunai straight to the face, it still hurts. <laughs> huh? um, or just simply him pull out a firearm and just like unload so much lead into you. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Guess what? People love to use firearms. Like, oh, well, I don't need to learn martial arts. I'll just use a firearm. Firearms are a force multiplier. If you're like, if you're a zero, anything times zero is still zero. Uh, so if you train in the martial arts, like we actually have gun in Ninpo, it's in the Ninpo Sanji Roke, uh, the 36 skills of the ninja and samurai, learning the art of using a gun on the battlefield. They had the old um, fire one at a time type of uh, rifles at the time and the uh, smaller handguns that weren't super accurate. So this guy getting like multiple rounds off, like no, no issue. That, that one's a little over exaggerated, but uh, <laughs> It's it's still it's still pretty cool to see it being utilized. It still has the same concept of uh, create space and cover in your movement. See, that's why they called this guy. His nickname is the Glock Saint <laughs> because he just pulls it out. And it just goes to town. <laughs> I gotta ask you. You said it was like with the demon blade or something like that, or a mortal blade. Was it was it the whole like uh, Muramasa blades? Did they, did they incorporate the Muramasa blades into this game? Uh, what word are those? Uh, so there was like a s- special swordsmith uh, called Muramasa that created, he was trying to make, you know, like the perfect sword, but mm-hmm. um, his swords had a thirst for blood in a sense and are known as demonic blades that sort of possess people that use them. Um, they sort of have this, so the sword that you use um, on your back, yeah. old character's back, the first time you handle it, it's like sucks like the blood out of you and just kills you on the spot. And then you can use it, cause like your warns like, hey, if you try to use this blade, it will kill the user like immediately. And you go like, okay, but right. because you have you know game logic immortality, you just get up and go. Well then. <laughs> so, but that's the only way why you can kill him, cause what happens is in this fight, he just fights you, cause he gets resurrected by his grandson to defeat you and restore their city or nation, right? Mm-hmm. And then because he's immortal, you're essentially you're both immortal dudes just fighting each other, just wailing, right? So. 
really can't die. So he at the end he just kind of just gives up and just like sits down. So you, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm hearing? What? R- real quick. Jackie, only immortals can defeat immortals. <laughs> because you're saying he's I, he's immortal. <laughs> and he's immortal. Well, they'd probably just be fighting to the end of time now, technically. But yeah. nah, only immortals can defeat immortals. Well, it's more like he just kind of gave up, let himself get kicked, killed by the mortal blade, because... Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that that was one. That, that was a very nice float. Mm-hmm. So he's at least getting four shots off. So that that looked like you did the like a parry down. For yeah, well, yeah, that's because he would do the continuation where he would stab it and then pull out, but you can end the combo. Yeah, from him doing that by so he, stepping. He on did it. that. He pulled it back, and no, notice how he like, okay, pole arms in danger, blade is back up front. Uh huh. So it's like he he's more or less sort of using it as like a sword and shield principle mm-hmm. for some of the stuff of like, hey, most people think I can only block with the sword, but I can punch you in the face with the rim of it too. Uh, that that's some traveling. <laughs> so I, I I do like that. Um, I, the mechanics have it as like a recovery strike. Mm-hmm. So he came in for like that uh, cross cut, mm-hmm. and then he's like, I missed. Let me continue to spin and then unload the pole arm off of my back. Mm-hmm. So I I I do like how he utilized that for a continuous strike. Mm-hmm. As he came across with a, a right to left chest swing, spears loaded in his left behind him. Then he's gonna continue, spin it over his head once, and then come in. And that that's like a mid to low strike. It would likely hit the leg. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no offense though, his weapons would be done. As much <laughs> as much as he hits the ground, the blades would have snapped off, been chipped away. <laughs> like earlier, way earlier on in the fight, if this fight takes on for a while he, he's just smacking that thing around like the downward brown slams and strikes with that type of blade it would have probably bent it a while ago um surprised didn't say anything when he jumped up in the air like 20 feet in the air and then like and then came in. Down. <laughs> yeah how, how he get that back out of the ground <laughs> it's just a point but I, I i appreciate the fantasy element uh-huh. like they're they're they're, they're cool there's no denial about it. It's, it's freaking cool. Like, that's a Beyblade moment. Like, uh-huh. what, what was going on there? <laughs> like, uh, he's, he's getting ready to do it again. So, he's he's turning into him. Uh-huh. And, like, no, again, this guy doesn't guard. Uh-huh. Like, I'm at point blank zero. I have this thing with my spear beside me. I'm going to go... Throw it over my shoulder a little and begin to spin while you're right here, drawing my sword square back. Immortality frames. Well, well, I was about to say he he won't like even if you hit him during this, he won't stagger because yeah. in an earlier part I hit him when he was doing this, he ignored the hit. Also, he's immortal, so that that's another thing. When you when you feel like you are you know you can't be killed by normal means, would you fight like this or would you still be reserved? How long has he been revived? Uh, like about five minutes ago. Like that's about the time frame he was revived. So most likely, he hasn't acclimated his brain to "I'm immortal." Yeah. So there's that. So he's probably fighting exactly how he would have fought. Well, before then. Um. Except for the the performance enhancing demon Jesus. So okay, let me let me try to break down. So there's two versions of this fight. There's him, which you see right now. Yes. Um, where this is when his grand, um, sorry, his grandson um, resurrects him with the other mortal blade, and then brings him in his prime, and he's all like, this. But then you fight him when he's old in another like ending of the game, where he's like an old man, he hasn't kicked the bucket yet, and he doesn't pull out a spear, he just uses a sword, and he basically just does like most of the first stage stuff, where he just had one sword, but he also incorporates a lot of, like dodges and like weaving in. So, so there's like an alternate timeline. Yeah, where that where, where you f- he doesn't die, and then you fight him as an old guy. Yeah. Versus this is him in his prime. Yes. Now in this one, did he die in his prime? No, this one, this in this timeline, he died as an old man due to sickness and got resurrected in his prime. Huh. 
the other timeline, he's an old man, and well, you find... then he probably realized he can't dual wield because tiresome as he got old <laughs> but like in this one if he got you know just suddenly resurrected he probably hasn't had any time to like you know know that he's really immortal <laughs> or like probably no one even told him that he's immortal i mean nope i mean he just came back and like oh <laughs> now i have to fight yeah <laughs> so he's probably fighting exactly how he would have fought in his prime without thinking about it in that sense okay so, but if he did have time to learn about that, he may have changed his, like, combat strategy. Because mm-hmm. if chipping damage wouldn't work, then you... Dude, like, uh, spear. Boom, 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 boom. No, no worries. I was about to say, then I feel like you could just two-hand the spear and just go to town and, like, not care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I totally feel that way. <laughs> but, like, he, he does that whole spin in place and then does the right swing. Now, the spear's still over his shoulder... And he's going to turn around and whip that in the opposite direction. And then do a, a, a underhand rising strike with one hand. I'm just letting you guys know, I enjoy spear. It is a very fun weapon. <laughs> but if you guys go outside with like a long broom or something, and then imagine it was like two and a half times heavier at least, and then put it over your shoulder and then come up with a rising swing and hit something with it, that is a lot of torque on your, like, rotary cuff and your shoulder. If you had two hands and a little less sharp of an angle, cool. But, like, this one, I, I'm, I'm just saying because I'm seeing it, and I'm like, man, that's cool, but, like, my, my shoulder is feeling that. Because it's, it's a one-handed, look, this is, like, the angle that he's hitting at, and he's going to hit a body. And it's going to, like, either slice through a little or hit and bounce off of and like ah, uh, i just imagine how much that, that that would suck hitting but he he hits a sword and he goes through the sword so that motion actually carries him through <laughs> carries him through and then goes into a slam and then the uh, a wind up uh sword draw yeah, yeah. He, he put the sword away and, oh no and... that that one was uh yeah it, it was a sword uh mm-hmm. sword draw cut I mean, that's still pretty cool. I, 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 I have zero issues with that one. I'm sorry. But what? The... He, he jumped up in the air. The lightning struck his spear. And he redirected it right back down at you. Like, I can't not appreciate that. Look, 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 look at that. Like, it strikes all up beside him. He's like, he didn't intend for that. He was planning on jumping up and hitting you anyways. And like... It, it, let, let's give this that, like, sword saint feeling in the air, like, some, it's about to happen. And he jumps up and just at the right moment, and redirects it. And it does, it just doesn't fry through, you know, his hands into the spear or anything. Mm Mm-hmm. And then goes, like, straight into the strike. And then it, like, arcs out, like, that, that, that... (laughs) That's just beautiful. Just take, take that in for a minute. You don't think that looks pretty? <laughs> I mean, and, like, say and they, they, they managed to maintain the shape of the blade, uh-huh. uh, of the portion at the end. Mm-hmm. But you know that the spear ends here and the shape would have still been. This is cool, though. <laughs> You're free. I like how you have like a get out of dodge like alert. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no 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 bad day bad day bad day bad day. Now I don't know if that one was intentional, but as you rose his sword up, there was a lightning strike that mm. struck right down behind it in the distance. Mm-hmm. And then there's another Beyblade spin at point blank zero, uh, point blank range. So he, he slammed the spear down, and then he turned out and used the sword to do a fast cut, which I find interesting. <laughs> What's the practicality of this one? <laughs> okay, you want, you want me to give you a practicality of that? Because, like, it looked at first, like, w- were those uh, the sword swings, or mm-hmm. was one a uh, spear swing? No, both of them are sword swings. Okay. I got... Are you going to be mad if I come up with some practicality about uh, it? I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. So, we got we got three strikes, being one sword swing, the second sword swing, and then the uh, spear from the, the back. So, he has the spear over his shoulder, 
already loaded up and he is getting prepared so it's turned in this fashion and he's getting ready to do a diagonal cut mm-hmm. down so he did the diagonal cut down and you're like oh man that was scary i gotta get out of the way so he came in boom he's there mm-hmm. yeah so i want to see where his spear is positioned uh still over his shoulder so he came back um uh, that was sword hands on the opposite side of his yeah, body he pulled Not- it here and then swung but then kept the spear over his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And now he's getting ready to do another swing here. Mm-hmm. Straight up, I would have thrown the sword. Just throw the sword at I would have, thro- I would have thrown the whole sword. Yeah. <laughs> and like, oh, that would have been the like whirlwind slash. Uh. <laughs> and then like right as like you reacted to that, I'm like, that's my spear. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling it right off of me and hopefully slice you right down the middle because mm-hmm. like the only thing is that his his footwork if mm-hmm. he had thrown it he would have been able to still keep his like lead foot pointing towards you mm-hmm. which would allow his spear to come back sooner like you're you're in his blind zone and he's gonna like turn face redirect and then uh do a jumping strike now like by all means though now, now imagine that same combo with what i was just talking about mm-hmm. uh where Wait for it. Watch Kirk die in slow motion. <laughs> and resume. Okay. So he pulls it over, winds up from mm-hmm. everything. Everything from this side. Mm-hmm. Slash down. And you're like, oh, gotta avoid that. Shroom. And then as that happens, throwing of the next sword, mm-hmm. you went to go to dodge that. Now imagine how, like, if you were so focused on dodging the sword being thrown and you you dodge mm-hmm. like straight up and because you dodge for a, a instance your body weight was completely committed mm-hmm. so that would have been a great time to either immediately follow up with a with a thrust of the spear hand mm-hmm. or get ready to propel it where you're going not where you were but where you're mm-hmm. going and not give my back and then reframe to finish the combo mm-hmm. so if he had done it as a a feint or a legitimate cut but you escaped it uh then the second cut was a throw mm-hmm. and then based upon where you went that lead foot turning to propel the next strike mm-hmm. or to use it as the thrust mm-hmm. so that, that that's how i would do you it. use that if you per okay. se yeah Now, that that one's an interesting motion too. But he does. Yeah. Cause he does uh, two overhead swings. Mm-hmm. So he got he comes in with the spear here, and does a left to right, um, a left to right sword swing, and then the underhand. No, this one looks like he's raising it, uh, palm down. So mm-hmm. it's like he's whipping it from behind his back a little bit. It does it. This one. It looks a little weird just because of the hand posture. Mm-hmm. But I will tell. Okay, yeah. He does that like... It's a rising swing cut from there. So he's like here, here. Mm-hmm. And then from that motion, wraps it over. So he wraps it over his shoulder. So he's like one, two, wraps it over this shoulder. Mm-hmm. And then gets ready to wind from the other side. But as he hits from that motion... He let it flow over into a second strike. Mm-hmm. So he got it from his uh, uppercut to this side, swung over, hit, mm-hmm. and then swung over one more, and then he followed up with the sword, and then that then that thrust. Mm-hmm. So the multiple like swings. It's just hard when there's an impact. Because it would be... I feel like that would be interrupted very easily. Because, like, that flow of getting that motion... If someone, like, were to put something static to block it, that yeah. would, like... It, it depends on how it depends on how close you are. Mm-hmm. If your sword's out in front of you, your sword's more like a toothpick. Mm-hmm. Even if, like, I were to hit it, 
this has more strength and power behind it and momentum mm -hmm. inertia to knock your blade out the way and keep going but if it hits you mm -hmm. and you're grounded it may not and nothing wrong with that you got him with the first strike that's mm -hmm. all <laughs> but uh, if he managed to either step away or put his sword up that would allow it then you would knock the sword out the way and okay and you would come in with a following cut from the same side of the direction that you uh the, well the opposite side of where you knock the sword mm -hmm. so it's like i hit it in that direction i'm going to strike you back in this way and there are there are sword cuts like that mm -hmm. um, i'm pretty sure you have one where it's like here here yeah uh there's katori shintoru where uh, they do a downward strike and then they bring it over the shoulder and they do one more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not too foreign of a principle to strike and then flow back and strike. There's one uh, Joe Kata technique that we have that does something similar. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a cool principle to sneak in there. Still one-armed spear wielding. It, it has its limits. Mm -hmm. um, and th this is a conversation that we had as well because I, I, I hadn't seen the footage of this character but Kirk was telling me <laughs> how he was wielding one arm uh, spear. And <laughs> in Kuki Shinenru, we didn't do it a lot, but there are the few katas where we do a strike and then we leap in, we do a spear strike, and we try to aim low, cause you to jump high and hit you, or swing high and then as you go low, come in and then we pull back and we're ready to, to thrust uh, just as quickly as getting into stance. So it's like, they are legitimate swinging techniques, mm -hmm. but it's not something that we capitalize on because if you're in armor, if you're on the battlefield, if you do stuff like that, you're going to get tired soon, and it may also be jammed up. I can go to swing my spear at you, but someone comes by on their horse, and this gets knocked out of my arm, and now I have to like pull out another weapon or something of that nature. So you have to think about the uh, context mm -hmm. as well. Like This is a dueling situation. Um, he's in an open field area. The bat the battlefield is technically in his favor. Mm -hmm. um, he can go get a tactical advantage. If he honestly, if uh, Kinsei went up a hill with his sword, realistic uh, uh, with his uh, spear, mm -hmm. realistically, Sekiro trying to close that gap while you can spear down downward with a height advantage, mm -hmm. it, it becomes real disadvantageous. But that's another thing, though. Like I'm not telling you what Sekiro can do, because I'm just here for his moves, so yeah. if I was using the full utility of Sekiro, like, he has firecrackers, you know, um, shuriken, like, he has, like, a Beyblade shuriken where he throws, he, like, charges it up with his mechanical arm and, like, let's bay, and it shoots it out and spits at people. <laughs> Bruh. Like, <I'm... laughs> that, that sounds dope, though. <laughs> so, if I was using the full mechanics of Sekiro, I don't think Ishin would have realistic, because, look, Ishin, he, he, what, is he wearing a helmet? That's like that's about like his only real. Well, I mean, again, like I, I was looking at this for more of like his realistic uh -huh. move set from what they were doing, and they like some of the physical attributes were boosted, mm -hmm. but I would say like besides the electricity and the wind <laughs> elements, like it wasn't anything too unreal, and that's a that's a thing that I could appreciate to a degree. Now, again, stamina and all that other jazz, it's, it's a thing. You wouldn't be able to wield this for too long, per se, mm -hmm. in this in this type of manner. And by all means, you probably would have done better spear first and then sword as a sidearm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, I, I told you, I appreciate it for what it is. And, like, I can see context, like, on how mm -hmm. to apply some of this stuff just, just for kicks in combat. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, there are some, you know, I, should, I I mentioned principles of combat that were being followed in this about, like, using your long-range weapon to create a safety zone to use your projectile. Yeah. Using your uh, long-range weapon to pull them into your short-range weapon. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this is stuff that you can use in unarmed combat as well. If you're like striking and you're working against someone unarmed, you can by all means grab onto their clothes, their neck, and pull them into a strike. Mm -hmm. When if you kept doing a strike, they kept stepping back. If you hold onto the shirt and they try to step back and they can't, and you pull them in, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's a legitimate combat principle of again trying to control the range. Mm -hmm. And uh, with him having the longer uh, weapon that he was more or less doing. The only thing that I, I, I didn't like, per se, and I, again, 
I know it's a game, so he's doing his uh, mechanics and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you're walking back and forth trying to control the damage as well. There were instances where he moved in on you at point blank and then began the, the what I refer to as the Beyblade spin up close mm -hmm. before actually doing something. That effectively put him out of the effective range of both of his weapons. If I got, like, here with a spear and a sword, you can shut me down pretty easily. Yeah. And, um, that element was... No, it's it's there. But I, I appreciate it for what it is. And, uh, you know, that that's my take on, uh, Kensei Ishin, <laughs> the, the sword saint of Sekiro. Um, like, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Like I, I should I should have uh, switched to this scene so it's up a little bit closer I guess uh -huh. but we were scrolling and everything too so that that that, that was legit I I, I enjoy uh, what the game has to offer. Uh, Would you want to play it if I give you my PS4? Eventually I'm I'm, re I'm really hoping this guy gets a PS5 because then I can finally play Ghost of Tsushima and work my way through the full story without any spoilers and like. Super buffed characters. Are like <laughs> I, I, I took out that archer like five times. Uh, what want me to take care of that? Or, uh, you, you get to die twice, George. You know, but I, I've already played the game and beat it. And most of the instances, so you know, my 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 reaction times there. I know the mechanics of the individual characters. But uh, anywho, if he can, you know, get get that PS Five. Look, look, that really. that's if I. Get it. Eventually, <laughs> but um, same same for Sekiro. Row. It looks pretty interesting. I would enjoy it. Uh, again, I have a special place in my heart for Tenchu. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great ninja series video game, and it has influenced this game to a good degree. But I felt that that fire was truly rekindled by Ghost of Tsushima, one that I appreciate pretty heavily. Like mm -hmm. you, you've seen it. The sword work and skills aren't like super outlandish. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it's based on some pretty cool stuff and uh, even the like ninja weapons aren't like super crazy mm -hmm. um, but again I, I look forward to playing some of this stuff and whatnot uh, what, what's your take on this after having this conversation um, honestly I think um, some of the big pieces that you brought is the idea that he's dual wielding um, a pretty large katana like he has it in one hand and he has a spear pole arm thing in his other like i feel like trying to do that because i was working on replicating his moves and i would just be able to do like only a handful of reps for like five minutes and be like cool <laughs> and i'm not even using like real weighted stuff i'm using like the light flimsy stuff yeah. and those body like the body motions of like the angles he's getting like especially that one where he's reaching down and swiping up like there's so much ground resistance with some of these, especially when he's doing like these sweeps and ground hits. Like you're like, I gotta pull them up above the ground when recreating them a bit differently. So it looks different only because if you try to do it like like you like you're phasing through the ground, he's just going <laughs> like Yes. <laughs> and oh my goodness, the ones where he like spear thrust into you, like even with a fake one of those like fake plastic things, that goes like this deep into the ground. I'm just like and he just goes I'm like sitting here, yeah, pulling up like so much earth from that. <laughs> it's like there's have to be some things that have to be changed a little bit. I think that's the thing when it comes to this. Like I love doing the moveset recreations, but sometimes I have to take liberties. Like for example, like some of the ones where he does like short sheaths in like the middle of combos. Like it's not gonna look like I can do the sheath, but it's not gonna be like also as th fast. Think, think about this. <laughs> he's he's I believe he's sheathing with one hand. Yeah, he's not he's even. He's still yeah. holding the spear in the other. Yeah, he's just going, like that. That's some precision, man. Like, <laughs> shing shing, swing, and then, chk, <laughs> like, we we've gone over sword draws, and like you have to work with the sheath and the sword separately to get some really proper ones. And like he has a, I'm I'm pretty sure he has a a longer than average katana from what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that just means the range of your sword draw is like compromised as well. But I'm not gonna lie about this either. That dude is tall AF. <laughs> like, he, he looks like Gumby, stretched out, ready ready for combat. That dude is, looks tall. <laughs> so he probably has the range and that sword works well for him regardless. Are, are you ready to Google his height? Yeah, I'm about to Google. <laughs> okay, he, he looks tall. And if you get the arms to match, you could probably draw a larger katana for this. 
And like there there while we like to say there's a standard katana length, it all depends on the user guys. Uh he'd be, he'd be roughly about nine feet tall if you like try to scale him. <laughs> I, I rest my case on that. <laughs> so look look. Imagine a uh uh um uh, oh, imagine a nine foot tall, jolly green, reanimated, demon sword juiced up ninja guy. <laughs> Using a spear and a longer than average katana. He, he's nine feet tall. His his arms are probably <laughs> close to four feet long. Plus the spear being like seven to nine feet long by itself. <laughs> On that range against, let's say Sekiro has the average katana. And the average katana is like 41 inches or something like that mm. so it's like a little bit more than three feet against the nine foot weapon plus the four and a half foot arm <laughs> with the guy who has the legs to match so he can do longer stances and, and stabs that 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 size ratio is wild and and, and the, you know firearm and a firearm <laughs> and a firearm so Everyone like it's out here with flintlock pistols and he just going <laughs> Yeah, he, he shot. He shot four rounds. Like, and and they had rifling because that grouping was wild. Mm. It wasn't like oh the wind blew because the wind was blowing the entire game. You can see all that. It's not like none of that. He had he had rifling and went straight on etc. Like this this dude's coming out of like uh, the new cyberpunk game, coming back in uh, Sekiro times the fight at that point, charging electricity blade. Uh, spear strikes and all, but uh, all, all in all, it, it, it was fun to do this. Hopefully, we can do it again sometime. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and while it was, it, while it is fantasy, I appreciate the effort that they went through to combine these different elements. Like we're talking about an unrealistic stamina, but <laughs> no, notice that every chance that Kinsei gets. He throws the spear over his shoulder, mm-hmm. and the the spear over the shoulder is a pose in which you, well, a stance in which you can rest and let your body get the oxygen it needs to go for the next combo. So he often strikes these stances in the middle of his combat. He's probably walking around in it, like gauging yeah. of when to do stuff. Mm-hmm. So like that that part's really good in saying, hey, we know we got this thing going on, but we're going to be conscious. Of the drawback mm-hmm. of it will tire him out. It will make him do wider swings. So like all of his swings are wide, but notice how he tries to continue the momentum mm-hmm. to be able to come in something else. Now that continued momentum only works though if the strike itself isn't blocked or interfered with. Mm-hmm. If it misses or it, it's a glancing blow that he intended, then it can set up for a lot of the other stuff. So I, I would say that you know. The game itself neglects some of the uh, physics <laughs> of strike play. Like, mm-hmm. I hit your arm, would my sword continue to go through? Would it hit and mm-hmm. then pull out? Because if it hits and pulls out, the, the combo has to change. If I hit you and then went into some stuff, um, it would go through. There is, there is some of that. I was showing some of that earlier where, like, um, you, he would hit with a sword, and if you parry it, like a perfect parry, it would like throw it to the side, and you'd have to do something else. There is some right, of right. that. No, I mean, but like along the lines of, he's he spun the spear twice, mm-hmm. even though he hit you up close, mm-hmm. or something of that nature. Whereas, like, if he hit you while he was further away, mm-hmm. it would probably have hit your sword out the way, and then he would hit you. Mm-hmm. But if you're in mid-range, and I, I went this, and you blocked it, I wouldn't be able to just, like, you know, wrap my... Mm-hmm spear around one more time mm-hmm. so it's like some stuff like that but again i i appreciate it for what it is and like i i'd play it mm-hmm. so yeah <laughs> uh that that's that's my take on this I, I i enjoyed it it's it's fantasy it's fun it's ninja awesomeness and immortal sword saints pumped up on performance enhancing demon juices but, but okay <laughs> well before we go i just wanted i just want to ask this one question what if we were to try to replicate him catching lightning in a spear and then, like, sweeping somebody, how do you think we could try... I don't say we're going to try it, but how do you think one would attempt to do this? You really want to know? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so they got, like, this one taser baton uh-huh. that, like, 
it's literally just a baton with uh, studs on one end that looks like a small baseball bat, and if you hit someone, it'll tase them. Okay. Strap that on the end of a stick, jump up and whack a person. <laughs> hey, the same effect would happen. And, like, if he's, if he's putting it on this channel, I'm, I'm going to require this as a disclaimer. Do not try this at home. <laughs> I, do, I do not suggest this whatsoever or anything. Like, you are responsible for your own actions and yada, yada, yada. I have a disclaimer. I'll copy, paste it, and send it to him. But do not try that. However, to answer this question, that's how I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay i think i think with that wild card uh we're we're good for the night yep uh thank you guys for uh checking this out it is it's fun i know i did a lot of talking uh but it kirk came to me for this one because yeah. I, I knew a little bit more about the background stuff uh, however check you know follow his channel if you haven't already <laughs> he goes into this stuff all the time uh, we're always discussing some of the different combos and whatnot that he's working on, and they're they're fun. I, I like to do them, uh, but it's, it's definitely his thing. Uh, however, we're, we've been talking about something that we might do on my channel that's a little similar. Okay. So uh, keep your eyes peeled and uh, tune into What Would Ninjas Do and Sir Kirk Knight of Green. Thank you guys for watching.